four corners analysis. This is something very uh, relevant, uh, especially when you study the competition. And introduced by Michael Porter, not exactly well known as a theory among students, but extremely relevant when uh, companies kind of strategize their future with the, with the competition. Let's take a look. So out here, um, it was Michael Porter's idea to bring up this uh, four corners analysis. He um, came up with the four key sectors to look into. When you come game up with the competition, when you line up with the competition, in fact, actually, uh, it's about drivers, current strategy, management assumptions, and capabilities. So we'll go one by one. What's been a driver? That is what drives the competition, not your company. What's the competition? He's been driven by that. So he wanted to find out these uh, three areas. What is it that drives them forward? What is it that drives them to compete with us, right? How does this motivate and shape their strategy? So that means how motivated are they towards competing with us? That's uh, what was kind of came up with the uh, idea. Yeah, technically taking a look at, a very deep look at the competition. Yeah, literally this is industrial intelligence, right? So we got to find out what their goals are, what about their current performance, what's the market position, basic things like all this information is available, mind you, right, easily. And yes, are they changing any kind of strategies at the moment? And what exactly is the strategy? So before we make up our mind exactly as to what to do, we check what they are up to. Now, I've used Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola. We used to call it the Cola Wars uh, as an example. Take a look at the, how their logos have changed from 1890s all the way to the 2000s, right? It goes on to show how much they've been changing, strategizing themselves continuously by gaming on each other. So you got to an analyze the competition and then anticipate what they might do and you got to respond to that. So continuously the design teams, the decision teams, the strategy teams, concept teams, they'll be brainstorming, trying to anticipate and figure out what, they are, what the other side is up to. It's very, very important analysis of the competitor, right? And yes, we got to anticipate their next move because any business strategy needs some timing. So today we might decide to do something, but um, finally when that action is kind of carried out, it will take months and months. We got to do a lot of decent research in order to figure out uh, the action and figure it out right. Yes, should be in depth and in detail. What are we checking? Mind you, all this information is available. Financial goals, corporate culture, organization structure, lead teams. So, you know, little info is kind of history, uh, you know, that is unavailable. It's always there, right? So uh, companies do not get the chance to hide much information about themselves. So you could easily study the competition, right? You could easily... Look into how and what and why they do it like. So it's not, you know, that difficult for a company to obtain this information. And what do we do with that information? Yeah, we study their current strategy. Now, what kind of business are they uh, looking to invest? You know, what about their network, supply chains? Crucial. It's a supply chain that determines a company. So how careful are they with regard to maintaining that supply chain? And what's the current strategy? That's the meaning of strategy realized. Any uh, you know, the expenditure that they're doing, any new products that have come up, any new purchase of companies that they've done, that's head to head. Take a look at Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Starting from 1970s, Pepsi used to be behind Coke, but they started gaming on. Thereafter, Pepsi started trailing Coke. Shot for shot, still Coke sells more than Pepsi, but take a look at the share values, stock values of that type, almost as good as uh, Coke now. Both of them are the same value because the investors think of both the companies in an equal way. Coke used to be well ahead of 
Pepsi. The Pepsi uh, with, with a lot of strategies, lots of uh, focus on the competition, right? And they have to catch up. And then let's move on uh, to the, yeah. What are they and who they want to be? Yes, that's also important. That means, you know, what exactly are they, you know, thinking or doing? What exactly are they in the way the current market is? And then who do they want to be? So what you are and what you want to be, what's a gap? Can they really reach that gap? And what are you going to, what can they do to reach this particular gap? To make a strategic change, we call it the sea change. Is it possible? Yeah, that means intended strategy. What are they up to? Okay, we find it out. Well, annual reports, interviews, public statements by the company, other company literature might give hints with regard to what the company might be thinking about doing because you know the company needs to let the com I mean uh, shareholders, investors, creditors know what you're going to do so that information is available to the competition also. The picture here, right, you know, I mean, both Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, you know, depended on patriotism of the USA during the First World War and the Second World War. So it was, uh, you know, initially utilized by Pepsi, but then Coke also followed it up, you know, to catch up uh, with regard to the, you know, the hyped up patriotism during the wars. Business intelligence, that means studying the competition and studying it in a very deep way. That's part of the game and that's the name of the game. Right? How do they, you know, kind of create value? And what are they planning to invest? What changes are they going to go on with regard to, you know, developing new network, developing new relationships? We have to find out. Then we can prepare ourselves faster. So by the time our competition is about to launch something, we are also ready because we found out exactly what they were going to do, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, as a management, we need to, so after carefully looking at their drivers and the strategy, then now we can make assumptions. What sort of assumptions? Take a look at what do they believe? Strengths and weaknesses, strategy, and yes, what are the areas that we need to check out? Yeah, we've got to get into the mindset. You have to think like them in the micro world and the macro. Micro means things that the competition is capable of changing themselves. Macro is the outer world, like, like inflation, exchange rate, you know, exchange rate and all that, um, and the government policies. So to them, how would our competition respond? So getting to know that, figuring it out, assuming that will help us to set our plan. So this is what Porter suggested, right? You know, it, it's, uh, it's very important to identify their sort, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat before we line up our strengths and weaknesses, which is very, very crucial. You know, uh, look at this advertisement here. The Coke and, uh, you know, the Pepsi always used to go after each other. So original advertisement was by, um, you know, um, by Pepsi Cola, right? Kind of hinting that, you know, Coke is almost like you know, the ghost of Halloween, like uh, the real thing is a Pepsi. And uh, yeah, then Coca-Cola technically hit back, right? Using the same... Uh, photo telling, yeah, everybody wants to be a hero. That means, uh, you know, kind of uh, poking fun at Pepsi, right? So trying to look like, uh, you know, you know, heroes wear capes, right? As if Pepsi is trying to wear, you know, a cape of Coca-Cola, right? So, you know, that kind of gaming on, have been going on with these competitors for more than 100 years. One of history's longest of competitions have been between Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And the strategy, yes. What shall we do now? The managers are thinking, right? What will they do? Because with their uh, with the understanding of what they're going to do, only uh, you know, 
we can make our plan. So will they be proactive? That means will they be taking more robust proactive actions or reactive? Will they just react to us? Or will they be very aggressive coming after us? Or will they be kind of passive? That means they're not exactly competing directly with us, but uh, you know, just mind their own business. We need to figure it out what they are about to do. Are they going to be proactive, reactive, aggressive, or passive? What's the style? What's the purpose? With that understanding only, yes, we can set up our own plan, our own strategies. And when the companies, uh, you know, do the stuff, uh, macro factors also play a role, right? Like the environment, sustainability, community, those are also relevant. What are the things that the managers need to check? Again, this information is easily available. Nothing of this is top secret, but they're human resources. What are the individual capabilities are? What kind of patents and the copyrights they have? Financial health? And what's their supply chain, which is very, very important. We need to know their uh, health of the supply chain. Right? That helps us determine a lot of their capacities and their marketing strategies. It's not that difficult for, for us to find out. And then the board, the CEO, there's fully available information. So I said, it's too visible to hide. We can easily get this information before when you make our assumptions. It's not that difficult. So four corners analysis, uh, the information that Porter suggests that we should get is available with us, the capabilities. Again, okay, we've done uh, a study of their drivers and then we took a look at their, you know, strengths, strategies, and then we, we made our own assumptions. And now we are looking at their capabilities. Can they really do them? What kind of options do they have to do? Option one, option two, or whatever. What choices do they make? And what about their chances of getting it? So planning is one thing. Thinking about doing something is another. And, you know, Deciding to do that is the capability. Can the company really do that? We need to study, uh, check it out. Yeah. What are they having in their mind in order to do? Strengths, weaknesses, the culture plays a role, values. Yeah. And how they look at our strategies. That's also important. We've got to find out what they think of us. Right? So there's a lot of thinking going behind. Before a company makes up a decision, a lot of intelligence, a lot of spying happens. A lot of, uh, you know, the data gathering, data analysis, assessments, assumptions, they all matter, right? Before a company decides, okay, let's launch this product. Let's open up a new branch, this place. Okay, let's increase our marketing budget. These are not just uh, done without planning. Immense planning is involved. And that's what, you know, the Porter's Four Corners analysis is all about. Take this example, please. It's about, you know, imagine something like a uh, restaurant. Now, I mean, this is what we see in our restaurant. Imagine this particular restaurant is something like, let's say, Ratnaika Bakers. Let's say, we are delight. So we check their drivers, right? They've been able to, I mean, uh, increase their market share, right? Uh, they're thinking about increasing the revenue. We know because that's in their literature, right? They are going to reduce the cost by this much. These are all plans. These are the plans that they're doing. So, and um, what 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 other things, right? You know, assumptions. These are these are the motivation aspect, right? And then yes, uh, the companies they think, oh, uh, Ratnaika Bakers are thinking that single queue system is applicable. That means you know, okay, uh, on a single line, right? rather than setting up multiple shops and all with multiple servings. But Michael Bakers always go for the small line things. Customer loyalty is high, yeah. And the customer loyalty will remain high, we know. And then they can react to changes quickly, yeah. Their shops are small, only one, no, generally one employee. Limited amount of goods, they don't keep too much of pastries. So pretty good, pretty well manage for Michael Bakers. And then what are their capabilities? Yeah. They can quickly react to the changes. They can open, they can close, they can expand. They would have a good repertoire of, um, okay, you know, products. So they can do it. 
I'm sure that they have good financial support. Yes, uh, they seem to be having good connections with the suppliers because during the COVID times, their supply chain was healthy, even now. Yeah, whether the economy is uh, up or down, there's low correlation. People still go to that shop at Naga Vegas. What are the things that they may be thinking or doing? Yeah, they'll still they will stick to the same system of smaller shops, single queue system, and they would still, uh, you know, go on to the delivery service, right? Yeah, they won't go for the fancy product, just a cheap uh, mid-range product. And yes, they will have differentiation of the product categories carefully. Yeah. So this is some assumption of our categories. Imagine that we are delight now with these assumptions and capabilities. You know, all that only we make our line of attack. Right? This information about the company is crucial for us to make up our own plan. Take a look at Coca Cola, the global strategy. You know, it's not just in the US. Uh, you know, the Coca Cola and Pepsi have their fight. It's a global, worldwide fight, country to country. There are countries where Pepsi is leading, and there are countries where Coke is having their way. Yes, this picture is about the growth in interest. You can see both in US and Canada, right? Interest in Pepsi is higher than uh, the interest in Coca-Cola. That means the future, right? And whereas uh, most of the world, right, except for Turkey, um, Greece, maybe, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Turkey. Greece and all, right, and the Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Norway, uh, Switzerland, right, everywhere else, it's Coke, and interest is grown. So they know they have a better chance of selling, but in US and Canada, Pepsi would know they have a better chance of selling. Information that they found out after strategy. Yeah. So with all this information, now it's up to the company to make up their strategy. They have studied our competition deep. Now it's up to us. I got to look out. You have to study the competition. You got to figure out what they are thinking. Then only we can game up with the competition. Yes, you never make strategic decisions before competitive analysis. And for that, four corners analysis by Porter is very you know useful. You know, most of the students kind of think about SWOT as a good one. Yeah, SWOT is pretty good, but this could be better it's because it's deep. It thinks about the future, right? So uh, SWOT doesn't focus much on the future. SWOT, right? The SWOT analysis mostly focus on the current. The uniqueness of this is this one plans the future. And yes, what kind of actions we can take? And yes, so what kind of conclusions that we can make uh, by correlating their future plans, then we can line up our future plans. That's the thing. Of course, this has plus and minus. This is the least known of it. Not exactly very popular among the students, maybe due to some complexities involved. SWOT is a very simple one, straightforward one. This one needs a lot of homework. Yeah. So maybe the difficulty perhaps is a reason that this is not too popular with the students. Okay, let's get back into the Coca-Cola walk. There's a video here. You might as well take a look at it, right? Um, it shows about, uh, you, know, um, you know, the intense competition, running competition, ongoing competition in Pepsi and Coke. I don't think there are many companies that studies the competition as much as these two giants do. You need the analysis. Then only that helps you to, you know, figure out the competition. Catch you in another lesson. Take care.